Thanks everyone for joining. That's again Matteo Carlini, Director of Software Technology Management at ARM, in the Open Source Software Group. So this talk is specifically on the ARM64 Linux kernel architectural updates. So the ARM64 kernel team at ARM does a lot of things. So in this talk, we'll not cover everything. This is specifically on the architectural enablement that we do, which is the majority of the work that we do as ARM64 kernel maintainers. So just let me start with a few pointers. There is a public table available on developer.an.com, which precisely maps all the specific architectural features from the ARM 8.1 architecture up to 8.6 and the specific kernel revision in which that feature got enabled for the first time. And there are also some notes for the ongoing features or features that are uh, at the moment queued or under development. So go check it out because it, it's, it has a lot of good information in it. So the introduction that I would like to make is a high level view on the status of the architectural enablement that we do in the kernel against the um, ARM architecture from 8.0 up to 8.6 and new features. So this slide is not intended to dig into each one of the specific architectural features. You can go have a look at the table um, offline. Um, this is just to give you an overview on roughly where we are. So you can see that um, 8.0 was the beginning of the ARM64 kernel, so everything clear in there. Then going uh, clockwise, top left, 8.1, again, everything done nothing left to be done. With A.2, there are a bit, bits and pieces left over, which I will cover in a minute, but broadly the architecture is, is completed and the support in the kernel is also completed. Um, the big mixing item from the A.3 and the A.4 architecture is probably the nested virtualization extension, the NB, which you will see in, in light orange. And that is under development. I'll explain the status later on. But other than that, A.3 is practically complete. I will share some updates on the pointer authentication feature. And from the A.4, um, we have MPAM, which actually is not listed here because it's a separate spec. But I'll talk about MPAM a bit. And I'll talk about the uh, remaining uh, status of nested virtualization. Uh, bottom left, a.5, you can see we are halfway through the enablement. Um, the great focus is around completing the development of memory tagging and BTI, branch target identification, which are the main security features that got enabled with the 8.5 extension. A uh, few other features have been enabled already, speculation barriers, uh, the random number generator, and a few other stuff, which I will mention later on. Um, on the A.6 architecture, we are, let's say, at the beginning of the enablement. A.6 was announced last September, six months ago. So we enabled the bits and pieces through hardware cap uh, exposed to user space. And then we are working on the rest on the enablement. Um, in, in a priority order, which I will talk about later. Uh, new features, so these are the so-called new architectural features, which are currently not part of the traditional uh, naming scheme of the ARM architecture. So SV2, transactional memory, and then I'll talk just a little bit about Morello. There's been a talk yesterday from a colleague of mine about Morello. And I'll just grab some highlights from that talk to recap the current situation. So moving on into the 8.2, as I said, almost completed. There are a few leftovers. One is the statistical profiling extensions needs to be exposed into KVM guests. There is a prototype code available on a developer's branch. Now the activity is going to be picked up by the KVM ARM64 community and should be reposted soon on list. And that will complete the SP enablement. Um, other than, um, at the bottom, the last bullet point, other than some perf tool improvements, which again are being developed uh, as we speak on the list. Uh, and this is gonna add support for SPE band in perf, 
so that from user space you can exercise and use um, the statistical counters. And the second bullet point, RAS. So we completed the support for the architectural uh, firmware first RAS approach uh, since 4.16, actually a year ago, roughly, uh, with few additions that got added into 5.0, like wiring up SDI into the API table. What is left to be done is the so-called kernel-first RAS approach, which is ongoing by the community. So ARM is going to produce a specification which defines the ARM error source table, Specification is in beta at the moment, available on developer, and is going to be EAC pretty soon in April. So that completes the ADA2 enablement. If we move forward, so I spoke about pointer authentication. It's an ADA3 extension with an additional uh, bit of the architecture, uh, bit not, not strictly speaking, an additional feature of the architecture in ADA6. The A.3 extension is practically complete. You will see the step-by-step -step enablement in the specific kernel versions listed here. So in 5.0, we enabled the user space support. We added ptrace frag sets for key management in 5.1, KVM support added in 5.2. And now pretty recently, a few days ago, the ARM64 maintainers queued the in-kernel support for function return address protection. Now, clearly, this is upon any um, regression or any fix that we might encounter during the merge window, which will open pretty soon, as soon as 5.6 is, is tagged and released. Um, we're still working on a crash utility uh, for crash dump analysis, which is ongoing. And as I said, the 8.6 architecture also foresees some improvements, some enhancements on pointer authentication, which are currently in discussion on list. So it's mainly two topics, some enhanced pointer row generation algorithm, and then uh, some faults that get generated when the uh, authenticate instruction fails. So next topic is around nested virtualization. So nested virtualization is a huge beast. Um, it comes together with both the A.3 and the A.4 extensions so such as a unique patch set, which enables the features altogether. It's huge. There are um, around 100 patches, little less than 100 patches on list to review. The development is carried over by the KVM ARM64 community. The ARM specific kernel team is reviewing and is testing all the features with the internal FPGA that we have available, which implements the feature. Um, partners are very welcome to test the feature on their silicon, to provide feedback, to provide acts on the patch sets on list. The current patch sets also include two features which comes from the 8.4 and 8.5 architecture. You will see listed there. So the translation table level, which reduced the cost of PLB invalidation, and the GTG, guest translation granule sites. Um, uh, chances are that these two features will be descoped from the huge patch set above so that they can progress um, quite quickly with respect to the nested birth that will take some time. It will take some iterations because, uh, before it settles down and before it's in a state it can be merged. Moving on, HEMPAM. So memory partitioning and monitoring. So. You might know, but if you don't know, we are working to extend an existing interface, which is based on an Intel uh, framework, which is called Resource Control, REST uh, Control. It's based on a, a Intel RDT feature. And this is for consistency, because uh, we want um, the ARM feature to work seamlessly with our partners using the same user space interface. But this also means that we have to put a lot of effort, which we already did, and we, we keep putting a lot of effort in reworking the interface, which was not multi-architecture uh, ready. So the first step that we are taking is reworking, fixing, extending that interface to 
make it multi-architecture. And these efforts resulted in another huge patch set, uh, more than 130 patches, just which are currently available on a developer's branch, uh, again, for, for validation and testing. But uh, bear in mind the rework, just the rework of the REST control interface to make it multi-architecture will progress throughout all 2020. And in terms of the specific ARM64 architectural bits, architectural enablement of the, of the feature, we are really targeting now 2021 because this needs to happen after we make the interface multi-architecture. The table below tries to summarize which are the MPAM controls and how do they map with the REST control interface. So you will see that there are two main categories of controls which can be driven by the REST control interface. One is the cache portion bitmaps for level two and level three caches. And the other one is the memory bandwidth portion bitmap. So these can be and will be controlled by the existing resource control interface. The other features which comes with the ARM and PAM um, architecture are not so easily driven by the REST control interface. Actually, there is no way at the moment to, to, uh, to drive those, um, those controls. So this has to be a separate conversation once we finalize the two running balls for systems that have the need to drive those pump controls. Moving on again, 8.5 branch target identification. So if the pointer authentication feature protects against return-oriented programming, branch target identification protects against jump-oriented programming. So there are two security features that comes very much, um, well, the idea is to deploy them very much together to protect against these sort of attacks. What is the state of the enablement of BTI? Um, so the user space support has been queued just recently, again, a few days ago. It's ready for the merge window, which will open in a few days. The in-kernel support instead is still ongoing. Um, there has been some preliminary work to rework in the annotation of assembly functions in the kernel, which again has been queued recently for 5.7. Uh, and we're still working internally on uh, the main feature, so setup, setup guard pages, which will see the light of the list pretty soon, probably during the 5.7 iteration, so after the merge window closes. Um, big thanks to our friends from the GNU and LLVM toolchain, because there was a problem which was preventing the internal BTI to progress in the past. So there was a problem with the patchable function entry uh, support in compilers. This has been fixed both in GCC 10 and in LLVM upstream. So now this is all good and the BTI enablement can progress smoothly. We are really targeting for all these security features the last, um, the next LTS version, which will be the 2020 kernel LTS. This is the target for PTI. And also for memory tagging, specifically the user space enablement. So memory tagging, uh, the last one of the big set of security features that comes with the 8.5 architecture, uh, also called memory coloring, collaboration with Google, the Android team to uh, consolidate and define is uh, this feature, the user space enablement, which allows Android to make use of it, is ongoing. We defined the ABI. The ABI is described in the documentation uh, since 5.04. It describes the relaxation on how to pass target pointers to the kernel syscalls. Um, heap tagging support for memory tagging is ongoing on list. And there is a developer's branch available, again, for, uh, for reviews and, and initial testing. And the work is very much uh, undergoing in conjunction also with the GNU toolchain team, because we really do want to test the kernel ABI against the proper glibc ABI as well before taking the patches upstream and merging the patches. So ongoing targeting again kernel 
2020 LTS for user space enablement. The internal support, the core changes for enabling the architecture for swap and page table support are ongoing for heap tagging only, again. If we are talking about stack tagging, stack tagging is a bit more tricky. So fine grain stack tagging, so coloring each function uh, is known to break kernel single image. So that will be really hard to accept. We are looking into alternatives for more coarse grain uh, tagging. But anyway, the current thinking is that this is probably gonna be a debug feature, which is definitely pending compiler support for stack tagging, which again, we already know that will not come before 2021. So stack tagging will be a topic, probably a debug topic for 2021. Moving ahead again, new architectural features, SVE and transactional memory. SVE, the first version, the evolution of NEON, the NEON instructions has been enabled uh, for quite a long time now, since 4.15 in the kernel and into KVM uh, starting from 5.2. SVE2, that's the enhancement of SVE, um, announced a bit more than a year ago, I believe, uh, from the architecture has been exposed to user space through hardware cap in 5.2. Not much more to done uh, to be done in the kernel. Um, it's mostly a, a user space work to make use of the SV instructions. Transactional memory feature for lock intensive operations, use cases like databases and so on, and JITs. Um, there are some initial patches on list which are against an early version of the architecture, those patches will need to be revived and reposted against the consolidated version of the architecture. We haven't heard an immediate pull from partners or from the ecosystem around that. So we are not planning to revive the transactional memory support in the kernel uh, anytime soon, unless we hear some strong requirements coming from partners and ecosystem. So if we take a broader look at what's coming in the next kernel versions, 5.6 almost stuck, and then 5.7, most of the features are already queued. So in 5.6, there are a bunch of four new architectural features that got enabled. One is an 8.5 um, E0 PD, so preventing EL0 access to half of address maps. This has been enabled. And as I said at the beginning, the random number generator, um, only the runtime support has been enabled in 5.6, but we already got patches for the boot time support so using RNG, uh, which are queued for 5.7. So you can see them below. From the 8.6 architecture, we have, um, as I said, two little exposure to user space, a vflot 16 and integer eight matrix multiplication. The kernel doesn't make specific use of this feature, it's just an exposure to user space. 5.6 will also include support for the ARM system IP, the new Geek Interrupt Controller interface 4.1. In 5.7, um, some of them I mentioned already, so a few things are already queued. So in kernel finds authentication, there are the activity monitors extensions, which are queued for 5.7. PMU 64-bit uh, enablement, so 64-bit counters coming from the 805 architecture, also included. Spoke about BTI, spoke about the RNG boot time support. And the last one I would like to point out is the memory hot remove. Uh, memory hot plug also has been enabled quite since a um, few releases ago. Uh, the only bit missing was hot remove and hot remove is now there and will be merged into the 507 release cycle. It's not over. There are a lot of other enablements that we do related to ARM specifications. So let's have a quick look really uh, into what are we enabling from an ARM spec point of view. Uh, the link here brings you to a collection of all the specs that our architects are producing on developer. So the first one is the PSA firmware framework, which I also spoke during the firmware talk. 
So this is about standardizing the way the normal world invokes secure services into the secure world. And it needs also a kernel driver for it. So the kernel driver is currently in development. Uh, the spec is expected to reach EAC by mid-April, and we will work very hard to stabilize the driver again on time for the kernel 2020 LTS. SCMI, Power Management Interface, uh, which allows the kernel to talk to an external power management controller, which on the ARM reference platform is the SCP, the uh, SCP coprocessor and firmware, open source firmware. There is a specification that defines the communication process um, and there are various step-by-step -step, uh, that are listed here. I'm not gonna go into details, um, but have a look and the latest notification support is on list and is linked there. Um, next one is the SMC calling convention 1.2. There is a new specific SMC that has been um, explicitly asked by partners, which is the SOC ID. Again, will be implemented very soon together with the publication of the spec. The uh, one before last is a news. Uh, ARM is also going to produce a spec around the TRNG, which has been requested by the ecosystem. The spec will be released as beta beginning of April, and it will define standard kernel and firmware SMC interfaces for requests um, through RNG support and seeds for RNG generators. Uh, this support in kernel and firmware is still TBD because the spec um, is still in beta. We're still reviewing the spec, but the plan would be to, uh, the plan for the plan would be to address those features in kernel and firmware somewhere in the second half of 2020. Last one, ACPI enablement. It's an ongoing story. The, the last one is regarding the CMN 600 PMUs. The spec is out in beta. Again, we reach EAC in April. Uh, and there is a developer branch ongoing um, which maps the status of the spec. So almost at the end, there is one last topic that we have to talk about, which as I said, is a highlight from a presentation from yesterday regarding Morello. The ARM Morello board, the prototype architecture, which ARM announced um, as an implementation of the Cherry architecture from the University of Cambridge. Uh, this is a wiki page on the University of Cambridge which describes the project, but I would like to point you to the presentation from yesterday uh, from my colleague, Mark Nicholson, which is listed there. He described all the step-by-step -step approach which ARM is taking for the Morello architecture, but focusing only on the kernel uh, interesting bit. So there is going to be two steps. Uh, one is for October this year, 2020, um, there is going to be an MVP, a fast model release of the prototype architecture. From a kernel point of view, we don't plan any specific work on the extended ABI, the 128-bit ABI. We don't plan for it on time for the October release this year. The October release this year will be based on a bionic library shim, which, in, which only expose some limited functionalities to, to an Android or Nanodroid stack uh, for you know, um, starting to enable some Android use cases. The real development against an extended ABI will commence, will start somewhere late uh, this summer or this autumn timeframe. We are still planning for it. And it will be a combined development with the tool chain friends from both the GNU tool chain and the LLVM tool chain. The idea will be to agree on an ABI and arrive by the time the uh, development board will be available in October 2021 to arrive with a proper kernel definition and with some patches that will be hosted on um, some separate Git repo. This is not meant to be a, an activity to be merged upstream as we go all uh, immediately. This is a prototype architecture with prototype ABIs, which will enable some uh, exercise from the community really exercise the architecture and see which are the benefits and the, and the um, costs of the implementation. I put some useful resources. 
uh, which we can go through offline. And that was basically it, unless there are any questions. If you can share on the NPAM and CPI spec update availability. Um, yes, this is mostly a question for our architects, but I believe it will come somewhere late 2020, probably in the second half of 2020. So I guess we can probably close it here and I can follow up offline with the guys that have more complex questions and we can uh, bring the conversation offline. 